So what we need to do is we need to estimate joints. We need to estimate the joint probability of a bunch of words occurring uh, together. And uh, so um, it's, not as it's not as trivial as we would like. Uh, we cannot estimate it directly in general. Uh, and the reason for that is, um, so this is the number of times that you see Jury and Monica and Lewinsky and Case. Uh, so for a short sample of words, you might actually get a couple of counts for this. But in general, as the number of words grows, you, all of your counts are going to drop to zero. Right, because pretty soon you'll be dealing with strings that just never occur. Right. So what's the probability of Monica Lewinsky case and Aardvark? Okay. Zero. Right. You just don't expect it uh, to occur. So you cannot count this directly. You can't count how many times you saw them together and divide by n. That doesn't work. Uh, well, could we assume independence? Um, and I'm saying no. Why not? Precisely. It defeats the purpose, right? If we did that, we could actually assume that they're independent and do that. But then jury, see, it's independent of the rest of them. It would, it would be the same number regardless of what query it was. Right? So your relevance model would be the same as your background model. It would, they would be identical. And you wouldn't be able to rank anything. So that's not very useful. So what are we going to do? Well, um, we did talk about this exchangeability stuff. So what happens if we assume exchangeability? So uh, we're going to assume that the order of in which I observe the terms doesn't matter, and I'm just getting a bag of observations. So if I do that, I have my uh, handy definite theorem, which tells me how to compute that stuff. Right? And the interesting thing about the theorem is um, it, has a lot of, it has a lot of letters in it. But all of these letters are actually fixed. You, 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 don't, you don't have any freedom for doing anything with that. Right? So this big theta, that is just a probability sequence simplex over the vocabulary. So once you have a fixed vocabulary, you don't have any choice over, over that. That's just a set of all probability distributions over your vocabulary. That's a fixed set. Uh, now this thing, theta, you don't have any freedom over that either. Because you're integrating over all possible thetas. The only, the, only, the only case where you have a little bit of freedom is this pi. Right? This pi is the density or the belief that you assign to the individual thetas in the simplex. And what the theorem, what the definitive theorem says is that this pi exists such that the probability of an exchangeable sequence is, uh, has this form. Uh, it doesn't tell you what it is. So, um, so uh, here is where you have to get creative, and you have to pick somehow uh, how you're going to assign probabilities to different thetas. Right? So what we're going to do is, again, uh, this is our simplex, and we have a three-word vocabulary for Monica, Lewinsky, and Case. Right? So this is the Monica corner, the Case corner, and the, uh, the Lewinsky corner. Um, so now think about this simplex. Every point in the simplex is a probability distribution over these three words. Now, some of these probabilities are plausible. Right? Some of them are going to be less plausible. In this case, all of the words can, can occur, uh, and they can co-occur. But you could easily imagine cases where you have a big vocabulary, where you have a probability distribution that is half about artworks and half about Lewinsky. And that's a nonsensical probability distribution. It shouldn't occur in practice. You don't get documents where half of them talks about Monica Lewinsky and half of them talks about um, artworks or other strange animals. Um, so, uh, so a lot of the points in this simplex are going to be nonsensical uh, probability distributions. Um, they make sense statistically, but not uh, logically. So what can we do? Well. Um, the assumption that you make in relevance models is you say, I'm only going to pick out the kinds of distributions that I've actually seen in practice. Right? So, and what does it mean in practice? Well, I have a corpus. I have a data set that I'm trying to rank. It has a bunch of documents in it. And if you think about it, each document is an example of a probability distribution. Right? So, if I had a document that had, uh, you know, two occurrences of the word Lewinsky and one occurrence of the word case, that is a probability distribution that puts two-thirds mass on Lewinsky, one-third on Case, and zero on all the other words, so Monica. Right? So as far as the simplex, it would be somewhere here. Right? So uh, two-thirds Lewinsky, one-third Case, and zero 
uh, mine. So, uh, so that's one way you can select distributions out of that simplex. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, for each document that we have in the database, uh, we're going to define, a, we're going to put a little bit of mass, a little bit of probability mass on the point on the simplex that corresponds to that document. And, uh, and the document itself, uh, we're not just going to take the raw frequencies, so that would be the number of times that the word occurred in the document divided by the length of document. We're going to smooth it out with the background model, so we're going to pull it towards the center of the simplex a little bit. So. Uh, the QW, that's, that, that, that's the background model, the model of the overall vocabulary, and U is a smoothing parameter, so that's a number that you set uh, experimentally. Right? So uh, for each document, you have a probability distribution divided by, uh, defined by these numbers, uh, and we're going to put a certain fixed amount of probability mass on those points, and we're going to put a zero everywhere else. Right? So uh, what that means, uh, geometrically, is that uh, we take this simplex and we put a set of spikes, a set of delta functions over some points of the simplex, the points that correspond to real documents, the stuff that we saw in practice, and we can put zero everywhere else. Okay? So if we do that, uh, a lot of convenient things happen. This integral uh, goes away because now we have an integral over a measure which is a set of delta functions. So the integral turns into a simple sum. So uh, then your joint probability for a set of words is just the sum over the documents. This is one of the number of documents. That's our pi, or that's our pi, right, the measure. Uh, and now we just multiply together the probability that this document gives to the individual <coughs> words uh, in the sequence that you're trying to observe, right? So that's, that's, that's your product where theta is now pegged to a particular document D. And then we integrate it out over all the documents in the collection. Okay? Um, 